In this video, we're going to be building a prototype in Figma and we're going to be exploring how to build a checkbox dropdown menu with select all and deselect all functions as shown on the screen. So as of this recording, I actually don't know if this is possible in Figma. There's just a general idea in my head that I have right now that I want to explore and test and we're going to be going through this process together and you're going to be able to see what goes behind solving a problem like this in UI design. So let's get started. Let's see how we can do this. And of course, if you'd like to save time and download the source file for this component or this prototype, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's take a look how we can actually do this. So I'm going to be starting with a blank file as usual. And I'm going to, first of all, define some generic, you know, structure that this process could have. So we know that, of course, there's going to be the actual dropdown that's going to be closed, right? So imagine this is a dropdown that will basically say something like select all that apply or something like that. So the thinking here is that when you click on this, you're going to get a dropdown with multiple checkboxes. Each of these is going to be a checkbox. It's going to be basically a multiple selection window, I guess. And uh, you will be able to click on each one of those, change its state from selected to deselected. And then additionally, there are gonna be two functions uh, at the very bottom that will select all and deselect all of these. So if you click one of these, basically all of these options are gonna turn you know, active. And then when you click the second one, it's going to revert back to the previous state, to the very initial state. Now, what needs to be done definitely is one singular component that's going to be the checkbox, right? So you're going to get one of these. And uh, this is going to be probably a component that's going to have like two states, uncheck and check. And uh, you're going to have five of these or more maybe, depends on your specific use case. You're going to get basically instances of this component in this drop-down menu. At the same time, I think it would be a good idea to have all of this, basically all of this, is going to be a component, okay? So this is going to be a component. Um, so you can kind of see the structure being established. You're going to have like a component within a component and then that's going to be used over here. And what I think we should do next is take this whole instance, take this whole component, right? Component instance and then we will set this to be an overlay uh, that's going to be enabled when you click this right so when you click this window right here this um, drop down this is going to appear right below and you're going to be able to do all sorts of interactions because you're, you're essentially going to be using an instance of this over here. So this means we're going to have to define the interactions over here. So this is where all the select all and deselect all is going to take place. And I suspect that the whole challenge is going to be making this all work so that these kind of reset do not reset based on the specific condition that we need. So I already suspect that's going to be a, the biggest challenge. Uh, but at first we can start you know, really simple. So let's start building this checkbox component and we are going to do this. We're going to use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard and click once. I'm going to make a square that's, you know, probably like 20 points and it's going to be just an outline. Okay. So this is just going to be an outline. Uh, it's going to be like this. We're going to be making a very simplistic, minimalistic uh, type of design. So all of this is going to be very, very visually simple. Then I'm going to use uh, the text tool and type in checkbox, right? Checkbox. I'm going to use the font Roboto Mono for no specific reason. I just kind of like how this font looks. So I'm going to use, use it. And then I'm going to set it to about 16, right? So you can already see the basic structure taking place, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select both of these, shift A and create an auto layout. This auto layout is going to be called a checkbox. Uh, by the way, I'm using command R to rename a layer that I have currently selected. So we do have a checkbox right now. I'm going to change the alignment to center and then also change this to 12 
you know, the specific values do not really matter. What matters is the structure, okay? So we do have a, an auto layout with two elements, and then I'm gonna, of course, add a fill, and I'm gonna add some pad. I'll probably go for 16 horizontally and 12 vertically, so that I get this okay so we do have a checkbox like this a beautiful simple checkbox and uh, we are going to be continuing with uh, turning this into a component and then defining individual states so let's go ahead and do that so i am going to select this i'm going to make sure this is set to hug uh, and also this is set to hug the text component and then i'm going to set a minimum width to this checkbox so i'm going to go to width I'm going to add minimum width and then I'm going to do, let's say, 200 and I don't know, 40, right? So for example, let's say that this is going to be the minimum width. Uh, this also means that whenever I keep adding the text, um, thanks to the hack contents that we have set up, the size of this checkbox is going to be adjusted. And if you're struggling with hack contents, fill container and so on, definitely go and watch, uh, go and check out my channel because I already recorded a video covering this exact topic. So as I said, minimum width is going to be to 40, right? Go for a hack on this again. I'm going to turn this into a component and then I'm going to select the text, specifically the text, and then I'm going to go to text over here and I'm going to create a text property. I'm going to click on this and text is going to say checkbox. Then I'm going to create another variant of this, which means I'm just going to select this and go over here to create a variant. And I'm going to name this on and this one I'm going to name off. So we're going to get off and on. Uh, why do we do this? When I create an instance, I can then easily specify whether it's an off or on state and also change the text easily in the instance, right? Thanks to component properties. So now we actually need to specify the difference in appearance so that it actually, you know, we can actually tell that it is enabled. I'm going to add a fill to this square and it's gonna be black. So now when we actually select this, we're gonna basically get this. But also I think I'm gonna add uh, a check, check mark like this. That's gonna be two points, it's gonna be white, just so that we can basically tell that this is, you know, selected. I'm gonna also group these two together so that I can do this. And then of course, I'm gonna just have to make sure these names are the same. So right now we have rectangle 18 within group one. I think I'm just gonna take this whole thing, paste that here so that we basically have the same thing, right? This doesn't really matter. Um, it's always useful to make sure that all of your variants have the same structure. So we have group two, inside of which we have vector two and then rectangle 18. And the same is true for the second variant. So right now we just need to change all this back. I'm gonna hide this check mark and I'm gonna also hide the fiddle on this square, right? So this is what we get, different enough. So now this totally makes sense visually. And the next thing I'm gonna do is actually specify the interaction. So we need to select the first one, go to prototype, and then connect the first one to the second one and say that on click, change to property one enabled, and it's gonna happen in an instant. Um, and the same is gonna be true for the second one that's gonna lead back to the first one, on click, change to off, instant. Okay, so we can also rename this variant property to say state that we have on and off state. I'm gonna reset all of this and I'm going to create a frame that we're gonna be testing this on. I'm gonna use an instance of this checkbox component that I'm gonna show you what we currently have. Let's call this test frame. Select this and launch the prototype. And as you can see, if I click this and click this again, we get you know this very simple interaction that just makes sense, right? You check and uncheck a checkbox. So to make this, you know, to take this one step further, we could add a hover state, which would have to be done in this specific way. Let me show you, I'm gonna select this state, duplicate this within the component, and I'm gonna call this state off. And right now we can see that we get a warning that there's a conflict of uh, basically of variants. This means that 
he called both of these off and Figma doesn't know which one we actually mean. So I'm gonna call this hover. Let's call this hover. And I'm going to add a black overlay with like a very subtle opacity, like eight. And I'm going to specify that in the prototype mode that when you actually, I'm gonna connect that to the second one, right? And I'm gonna specify that while hovering, we're gonna change to state hover and it's gonna happen in an instant. Now I'm also gonna have to adjust this interaction right here, which means that this one's gonna stay. So on click, change to instant, because we're gonna hover first and then we're gonna click on this, which is gonna take us here. But this one, when we actually click this variant, it's not gonna go back to the hover state, or actually it might, let me, let me check. So when we have this component, yeah, so we need to actually take this arrow and connect that to first state. Let's see if that turns out the way we need. Yeah, that's, the, that's definitely what we need. So basically the structure of this component right now is that when you hover over this first state, uh, you're gonna get here. And then from here, if you click this, you go to the last state. And then when you click again, you're gonna go to the first state which then immediately takes you to the hover state if you're still hovering over that component, right? So basically the final result is gonna be this, okay? Um, so yeah, right? So we do have a fully interactive checkbox component right now, and we now actually need to start building this component where we get the select all and deselect all function. So how do we actually do this? Well, we do need to use an instance of this component. So let me duplicate this, alt and drag, and then I'm gonna duplicate this again so that I get like multiple instances, right? Let's say I get five checkbox. Now I'm gonna take this, select all of these and press shift a. I'm gonna then press enter and set all of this to fill container. So right now when I resize this uh, auto layout, you're gonna see the checkboxes changing the size alongside with this container, but it's not gonna go below the 240 minimum width that we specified here. So that's why we actually cannot scale this down below 240, right? So we do have this and now let's actually borrow a text object from the component and paste that inside of this auto layout independently. Make this say select all and then I'm gonna duplicate this, enter and deselect all. I'm then gonna select these two text objects, shift A and make sure they go horizontally. I'm then gonna set this auto layout to fill container and set the spacing to auto. And this happens, right? That's exactly what we need. I'm gonna also add a fill that's gonna be white and I'm gonna add padding similar to what we have here. So that's what, 16 horizontally, 16 horizontally and around 12 vertically, okay? We could also just select this again and then on the stroke, we could do a top only line so that we get a divider between the checkboxes and the rest. So right now, what is going to happen is I'm gonna select all of this and turn this into a component. I'm gonna then rename this component to drop down contents. And I'm gonna use an instance of this to show you what we actually have right now. Right. So let me do this off and then instance of this right here. I'm going to have to make this slightly bigger center and then size. Let's go to prototype and can see that we have a set of checkboxes and we can check and uncheck each and every one of these. Right. So we do basically have a drop down. And the only problem right now is that these do not work and this is actually not a drop down. Okay, so this is just a set of checkboxes. So let's think about how we can actually, what we actually need to do here in the drop down contents component. We definitely need another state. We do have another state and the first state is gonna be obviously all deselected and then this one is gonna be all selected. And this means that I'm gonna select all of these within this variant and I'm going to set them to on, right? Because all of these are on, right? Um, then I'm going to go to select all in this variant, go to prototype and then connect that to the second variant so that when we actually click on select all, we, we 
you know, change this component to this variant. Uh, additionally, deselect all is going to do the exact opposite. It's going to go back to this version, right? On click, change to all deselected in an instant. So now when I actually go to prototype, I have a suspicion that this is not going to work and I'm going to explain why. So when I now go through all these checkboxes and then I select some of them and I want to deselect all, it doesn't work. But I can go to select all, which is going to check this checkbox. Uh, I can then click on deselect all, which is again going to deselect the last one. But that's not really the way things are supposed to work with a select all and deselect all drop down menu. So I think what we need to do, and if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to try a different approach. So what we need to do now is I think, right? Remember, we're going through this process together. So I think we need to check reset component state on this one and then reset component state on this one as well. And when I do that, I'll reset the prototype, it should work, right? So as you can see, it is now working as intended. Um, the only problem is that when I actually click on select all, deselect some of those and then click select all again, it doesn't work because we are in this state, right? It, everything is already selected. There is no reason to actually, you know, change the state of this component. At least that's what Figma thinks. But deselect all actually works and select all works again, deselect all works again. So the only problem is that if we actually do some selection, then click on select all, and then we deselect some of them, and again, click select all. It doesn't work, that's the problem. So again, I just clicked deselect all, checked some boxes and wanted to click deselect all again, but it doesn't work. So how can this problem be fixed? Now I think we need to do an in-between state. I think we need to do a state that is enabled right after you select or select all or deselect all checkboxes um, and then immediately switches over to another state. So let me let me show you, okay? So let me remove these interactions. Let me remove these interactions and start over. I'm going to move this one over here and then duplicate this one and duplicate this one. Okay, so I have basically two fully deselected and two fully selected. I'm gonna then select this one. Let's start with this one. And I'm gonna rename this after all selected. And then I'm gonna rename this one to after all deselected. And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna select the after all deselected and I'm gonna go to prototype and connect that to this one, which is gonna be called all deselected, right? All deselected, and this one is gonna be all selected. So let's quickly recap because this is getting complicated. Um, so we do have four individual variants of this drop-down contents component, which contains these checkboxes, okay? We do have after all deselected, all deselected, after all selected, and all selected. Right? We have four of these. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to select the first one after all deselected and I'm going to connect that to the all deselected, right? Basically to the second one. And I'm going to do not on click, but after delay. And this delay is going to be very short. It's going to be like 50 milliseconds. After 50 milliseconds, it's going to automatically flip to this version. Okay, similarly, I'm going to select the third one and connect that into the fourth one and do after delay 50 milliseconds change to all selected instant course reset components states. Let's see if that's necessary. I don't think so. But uh, yeah, this is basically it, right? So these two states, these two variants, this one and this one, the user won't even have the opportunity to interact with. That makes sense right? Because this is just a transitory state as well as this one. That's just going to move us to a different variant. And now these two are going to be the two that the user is going to be interacting with. So I'm going to select the first one and then select this button that says select all. And I'm going to connect that one to the third variant. And it's going to be on click, reset component state and change this one instantly. Similarly, deselect all is going to lead back to the first one, right? So on click, change to property one, 
after all is selected and again reset component state or apologies actually that's going to go from the second from the fourth one from the fourth one all the way to the first one on click change to after all deselected right so it's getting a bit complicated but don't worry it's gonna all make sense it's gonna all work hopefully <laughs> right so let's test this out i'm gonna do this i'm gonna select a couple of these select all uncheck some of these and then and then as you can see select all is not working still so what are we missing we're missing this key piece of the process this key function so when we actually are in the second checked state uh, we need the option to basically return back to this one right so we basically need to go from checked to checked which is going to reset all of these and then similarly we need to do the same here so deselect all again from the second one goes back to the first one which is going to reset all of these and then immediately return us back here uh, but this one's gonna be wait this one's gonna be on click so as you can see we accidentally had a track interaction so let's remove interactions and let's start over so connect this one over here on click after all deselected and instant so right now hopefully this should work let me check some of these select all uncheck some of these select all again deselect all check some of these deselect all check deselect select and it seems that we are actually we managed to make this work right so congratulations to all of us uh, watching this video and making this video so you can now see that we got a fully functional select all and deselect all component uh, through these interactions right so this is a bit tricky as you can see you need a prior knowledge of prototyping but again, if you're confused, if you couldn't make this work, remember there is always an option to download the source file for a very low price if you really need this in your project. So definitely go and check the link in the description if you're still, um, if you can't make this work simply, right? And now the only thing that remains is, is the overlay. And now here I'm actually for real not sure if we're gonna be able to make this work okay so this is a bit of a cliffhanger now let me so let me let me take this one checkbox and let me detach the component right i'm going to rename this i'm gonna make this say select all that apply tip something you typically see on a multiple selection uh, menu basically okay i'm gonna extend this and i'm gonna do a little drop down icon that's gonna be black and it's going to be two points white command x select command v and spacing set to auto so that we get this situation okay so this is our this is going to launch our drop down. I'm going to turn this into a component again. And this one's going to be called, uh, not checkbox, but it's going to be actually called checkbox drop down. Okay, checkbox drop down. And what I'm going to do now is basically select this, go to prototype and add an interaction. This interaction is going to do that on click. We are going to open overlay and then let's see if we can actually specify that we need this, uh, this instance, this basically this frame over here, right? So let's try that. This frame is called drop down contents. Let, let me actually just connect this if that works. Yeah. So it's gonna be on click, open overlay, drop down contents, and it's just gonna be instant, okay? And the position is gonna be manual, and it's gonna appear right about here, okay? That's gonna be the position. And now, while we're at it, let's just make sure it's the same width. So this is 285, let's just make this 285, okay, 285. Um, that should work. Okay, and we do have the overlay interaction. And we're gonna specify that we are going to close when clicking outside. And now let's actually use an instance of this checkbox dropdown on here, on this, on this uh, test frame. So this test frame is over here. I'm gonna go here and then reset, just to make sure. And let's see. So select all that apply click and we do get a checkbox drop down that we can then select all of these some of them select again deselect check 
deselect and then that's it. And if we actually click outside and then click again, as you can see, this kind of works, but when we close this and open it again, you can see that actually all this resets. So let me think about a way how we can actually create a workaround for this and if actually there is a way. So let me think for a bit. So one idea that I have is actually using this component directly inside of this component. So let me just take this command X, select this and then command V. Now, of course, this is going to mess up our whole component. So let me actually do a few adjustments. First, I'm going to have to select these two shift A and then I'm going to have to do basically what I have on the top level which is all these paddings so 16 I'm going to have to do that on this container right so uh, drop down the container and I'm going to remove the background from this top level and add it here so we basically nested this right so this drop down container is now nested inside of this drop down. Cakebox drop down contains drop down container. So now I'm going to actually remove these paddings zero zero and I'm going to do fill container. Okay. And what I need to do right now is I believe that we need to take an instance of this an instance of this command X checkbox drop down command V. However, it's going to be vertical, right? Vertical like that. So this is the component and this component is going to be fixed width. So basically all of this is going to be inside of the component, but outside of the bounds of the component. We're going to make sure this is not selected because if we do select this, this is going to happen where we actually crop out all these things from, from this, um, this component. Okay. So right now, what should happen is we need to create another variant of this. I'm going to place these next to each other. OK, so we get this space. And now I'm going to hide this one. I'm going to hide this hide layer and then I'm going to select the first variant and then simply connect the first variant to the second variant. That's going to be on click. OK, it's not going to reset the component state. And then I'm going to select this window, connect that to the first one and do mouse leave. So when a mouse leaves, we're going to revert back to the state. Now we need to test now if that works. Checkbox drop down. We select this, use an instance of this and go to the prototype. And as you can see, it's not opening. The reason why it's not opening is because basically we said that when a mouse when your mouse leaves this area, close it. But it, as soon as we click this, our mouse is outside of this area in this state, which means it's going to revert immediately back. Okay, so basically this interaction doesn't work and we need to do it differently. So I'm just going to probably do the same as we have here by clicking. It's going to revert back to the previous state. So on click, change to property default. Let's test it again. And as you can see, we finally made it work the way we intended. So first of all, when I open this and do some changes, I can then close it again. But this is going to remember what we selected. Additionally, I can select all, deselect some of them, select them all again, deselect all. Again, I can do whatever I need. It works just like the real thing. And when I'm done with all this, I can actually click here again. But as you can see, we do have some issues with closing this. So again, let's try and make this work. So it turns out that you need to actually remove this object altogether from this variant. And now it works. Let's see. And it seems to work. Okay, so whatever we now do, uh, it remembers what we selected and also enables us to deselect all and select them all repeatedly. And if we actually duplicate this component now, we get the menu twice. Okay, so that's very good. We can do whatever we need and it's going to remember our setup. Okay, as you can see, it is possible. It requires a little bit of problem solving, quite a bit of problem solving, to be honest. Again, if you didn't manage to make this work, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can buy the source file for this for a very low price. So yeah, this is essentially it. You can see this is the structure. We do have the checkbox, then we have the drop down contents, and then we have the checkbox drop down as the mo top level most um, component, right? So we have multiple components, multiple instances, quite a lot of interactions, but the final result is there and it actually 
it actually works. As you can see, a simple thing like this can be can get quite complicated. The reason for this is basically Figma is a prototyping design tool and things that usually, you know, in other software maybe take single feature, a single, you know, click. Um, things get a little bit more complicated with Figma since you need to basically start from the from the bottom essentially, right? So thanks for tuning in. Again, leave a like if you found this useful and I will see you in the next one.